Hey everyone, it's Frankie Lou and Angus and so um <laughs> so this is one's dot, I believe. Yeah. This one's butter and this one's cocoa. Yes, our three newest ducklings, members of the family. If you watched our um our egg incubator and egg cuddling video, these are three of the little guys that are coming out of there. There's still some more action happening downstairs in the um incubator and we could get a few more <laughs> but for now we got these three little lovely guys Smile for the camera. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of the care and and needs of these little ones yep. and things we've learned over the years because we've done several hatches about best ways that we have found for us and won't, won't work for everyone um of how to deal with runner ducks when we're hatching them out because they are very special little guys yep very clever very fast and there's certain needs that we have to take care of right from day one. So we'll get started on that right now. Okay, so one of the first things we wanna talk about is a term that you'll hear, hear about if you ever are considering um, doing incubation, lockdown. lockdown. Okay. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not really, or not quite. Um, the whole reason for lockdown is really important and we yeah. actually didn't know about lockdown for a couple of our early hatches and it was sad because we in essence shrink wrapped our ducklings inside the eggs so with their own semi-permeable membrane with their own semi-permeable membrane and they couldn't get out because we somehow I thought I had read everything I needed to read about um, incubating eggs and I was wrong and now we know that lockdown is really important the whole point of lockdown is to maintain the humidity in the incubator as the, the yeah. eggs are hatching. Humidity is extremely important because it only takes a few seconds once a, net, a shell has pipped, and we'll show you footage of a pipped shell in a second. Yeah, pip means like start packing the way up. Yeah, you might think it means when they start pipping because as you see in the footage Peeping. we'll show you, they actually do peep inside the shell. It's pretty exciting. Um, but. Pipping is when you start seeing a crack on the shell. If you open the incubator during that period without maintaining the humidity, the membrane inside that shell shrink wraps onto the poor little chick or duckling. Yeah, because it contracts. And it can't get out. So for lockdown, what you want to do is you want to take out the egg turner. We yep. recommend with ducklings that you take it out on day 25 because yep. Dot was born on day 26. If you don't have an egg turner and you've turned them yourself, don't turn them. Yeah, stop, stop turning, turning them. Because the eggs, you'll see, they'll start moving yep. around and finding the position that they need to get in to get out of the egg. And another thing, um, just to um just as like a so lo some people like to put them in egg cartons before lockdown don't just leave them right on the yeah um, we, we find thing. it's good so that they can move around and get get yeah they like the to roll so their head is like this is in the right position to get out and we'll show you an egg that's in the correct position and it's pipping and getting ready to come out in a couple seconds here so lockdown maintaining humidity so what we do is we work as a team during yeah. this period and um, when we know that an egg is hatched, we leave that duckling in there for a minimum of 12 hours. And yes, up, and you up, leave them in for 12 to 24 hours. 12 to 24, yeah. You, they are so exhausted. Honestly, being born is the hardest thing that a duck ever has to do. So they kind of just need that time to chill in the warmth without a ma major change in temperature and lighting and all that and just get their bearings dry out a little. They won't dry out much because your humidity, humid, humidity in your incubator should be pretty high. Yep. And then you um, move them on out. But when we do that, Angus will lift the incubator lid slightly and mist with a fine mist of, of nice clean water while I quickly extract ducklings and any if I can any of the broken eggshell because it gets pretty rank in there pretty fast so so you want to maintain the humidity the point of that is you're gonna go in you're gonna mist you're gonna keep that humidity in there so that if there are any eggs that are pipping while you're removing your babies they won't die <laughs> okay it's that simple all right so that's locked down yep. let's show you uh, and now we're gonna show some footage of a baby egg a little pipping. duckling pipping and then we'll talk a little bit more about these patched ones and what their needs are. Okay. All right, so we got a little one trying to make its way. You can hear it. Yep. If you just take a minute to listen. 
Okay, and every once in a while we see the shell starting to, there it's moving, he's turning real hard. Yep. And in about an hour, hopefully we'll have a duckling. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's a few hours, and sometimes, sometimes it's 30 minutes. <laughs> sometimes it's been a day. But it's uh, it it takes different different amount of times. There's no set schedule for these things. That's for sure. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get into. Hey, little one. Sometimes they respond when you talk to them. <laughs> see. Oh, okay. As you can see here, water, water is very important. Yeah, water is so important to ducks. Ducks are obsessed with water. And that's great, um, but there's a couple things that need to be kept in consideration when you're dealing with little duckies in water. It needs to be deep enough that it goes um, above their nostrils. Above their nostrils. It can area the holes um, yeah. on their beaks. <laughs> yeah, but it, at this point in their lives, and they're this little, and they don't have a mummy to rub their oils all over them, if they get into a wa water dish that's too big, they could actually drown and hurt themselves. I know that's they get waterlogged. Waterlogged. We've seen that happen. Um, so it's kind of important that at this point you sort of protect them from their own addiction to water. Uh, we do get them swimming really soon. In a week's time we'll start introducing them to water, but not yet. But yeah, we got this, um, gadgety thing yeah, it's that a, it hooks up to a mason um, jar. A mason jar. Yeah. Actually it came with this plastic thing, but we lost that thing. But, okay. but it, yeah. It's a mason jar. Yeah, and then as they get older, we progress to larger and larger sizes yep. to the point that they can actually get into the water. Yep. Eventually, like in about two weeks' time, we're we'll use this. Over to that size. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So water. We just important. got this. Okay. So for now, we have our brooder set up here in our mud room slash laundry room. It's a really good idea to have it in part of the house that can be easily cleaned because my gosh, you have no idea how messy these little guys can get. Yep. So, three thing, two, two, or whatever number. Many considerations. Many, are, many things to keep into consideration when you're setting up your brooder. Number one, big enough for them to run around in. Mm-hmm. Because these guys are runner ducks. They will run, won't they? Yes, Angus? that's why they're called runner ducks. <laughs> okay. Number two. Um, it has to be high enough so the drafts don't get yeah. in. Number three, ventilation. We built this lid for it that is um, chicken wire, mm -hmm. so um, it, it can vent out. And all it the also gases. rests the heating lamp on it, doesn't yep. it? Honey? And number that brings us right into the heating lamp. Mm -hmm. So, what are we using? So we you use those like pet light bulbs, like the red ones. Uh, it's best to use a hundred watt bulb. Okay, I guess why do we use a, a red light bulb? The reason we use a red light bulb is because they don't see blood on each other, and if they see blood on each other, they'll eat it. Yeah, it's a little and gross, isn't it? And eat each other. Yeah, they, it can happen, so it sort of helps. Yeah. All right, so Angus, um, we use the red light bulb to, to help inhibit cannibalism, and what's another reason? Um, it doesn't keep them awake. Right. All, all other colors of light will keep them awake. It can, yes. And how do we know that we have the right wattage here at 100? If we're looking at our little ducklings now, how do we know it's good? Okay, so if they're right in the corner where the um, uh, wattage, where, where the light shines, then that means it's too cold. Yeah. Um, if they're in all the other corners, like if they're in the water corner, because we have it in the opposite corner, that all the time, and except for because they're playing in the water, it means that it's too hot. And how do we know these ducklings that we've got have got the right temperature? What have they been doing? If they go all the way around the cage. Yeah, they're... they they'll usually sleep under the light bulb, but they like to go to the water. But yeah. Yeah. So these are really happy little ducklings. They make lots of noise as they run around, and but not a distressed noise. It's a nice, calm little peeping. Yep. They play with each other. And Okay, so we don't want these little guys eating the wood chips because they're very, very curious little things. Yeah, and, they... and they'll do nothing but eat wood chips until they're nothing but wood chips. Yeah. And there's no duckling left. Yeah, <laughs> so so we don't, until they're a little bit bigger and can help, um, can handle it, we don't expose them to the wood chips underneath. That'll be about a week's time. In the meantime, this is the only thing they're eating. 
their little duck and goose starter with a little bit of grit in it. Okay. Yep. And don't use standard grit. Use chick grit. Chick grit, exactly. The standard or, or duck and grit. It might be labeled as duck and grit. No, but... it's always chick grit. Yeah. Okay. So, so that and then we'll switch them over to just the wood chips. This towel needs to be changed every day because these are yeah, very messy it's little guys. Very... Yeah, and um, another thing you might notice in here are a bunch of things that Angus has created for them. What are all these wonderful little, it looks like you put a garbage in here, but it's not garbage at all. What is that, I guess? These are like little distractions and things. So when they're first introduced, they'll bite each other, mm -hmm. but they can crawl into these. So the ones, so what you can do is cut, two things you can do, cut a yogurt container in half, so like it's two halves and then put them on the ground like the two yogurt ones and then um like what I did with the sour cream one um I uh, you cut like a little arch with it upside down so they can get into it and it's like the nice tall thing and they sl and they sometimes sleep in them well yeah, it's really great. The other thing I, we like about these is it's reusing some of the stuff we've got in the house anyways. And it's easy to clean because these are the messiest little beasts in the world. As you can see, since we put the towel down there five minutes ago, it's already. So it's nice to be able to clean everything and this plastic is really easy to clean. And then there's one other thing in there. What is that, Angus? That's a stuffed animal. Yep. They really really like it okay i know it might seem silly and yeah they'll, they'll cuddle with it it's good for when you have single ducks for the first couple of days sometimes you might and if you have a bad hatch you might only have one duck that's happened once with us twice yes so um we love the stuffed animals and so do the little guys okay everyone so as you can see it's a pretty exciting time here we're really enjoying it not getting a lot of work because these little guys are just too cute and we're spending way too much time with them but you can see we're handling them okay and that's one thing we didn't talk about oh yeah do you want me to hold let's it? just talk about it now okay so here i'll hold them for a second while you talk about it so number one thing when you're handling wash your hands before mm -hmm. and after yeah so first the, when you do it before, that's maintaining their hygiene. Mm -hmm. And um, when you do it after, that's maintaining your hygiene. Yes. Because to each other, we're disgusting. Yeah. We're disgusting, they're disgusting. Yeah, everybody's disgusting to each other. So we want to protect uh, both the ducklings and ourselves. But that being said, we want to have ducks that are as nice as the ducks we already have. Yep, yeah, so handle them all. We do handle them. Um, I yeah, make sure so they'll get used to you. Yeah, you want to have you. We want to have ducks that are friendly, like Webster and their daddy. And so that's how we do it. Is we do spend a lot of time handling them so that they're used to it. They're not afraid of us, and uh, we think it's worthwhile. Um, yeah, and it's hard not to because uh, they are so cute aren't they yeah. so so that's it for this video um, I hope that that was helpful please don't hesitate to ask us questions we will be posting more updates as as these little guys are growing and transitioning into their home flock and getting outside um, also if there's any other things that you want to see on our homesteading channel that could be of use to you we're gonna be doing some stuff about duck eggs and eating them and preserving them we're going to be doing more on our bees, planting, preserving, all sorts of stuff. And so just ask us questions and we'd be happy to answer them. And as always, we hope you take this chance to grow together today. Bye from him and from us.